Today I'm going to talk to you guys briefly about two of my favorite topics, which are technology and alcohol. Um, <laughs> so the last three years I have worked at a company called Quid. Um, and I've helped them build technology that addresses a really simple but very powerful problem, which is that reading doesn't scale. So today's world, you have millions of news articles being published every day. You have Facebook, you have Twitter, you have patents, and all of this text holds data. But it's nearly impossible to get at that data unless you read. Um, reading is a super inefficient process for a number of reasons. To give you kind of, kind of some sense around how inefficient it is, uh, the CIA and the NSA and all of these other acronymed defense and intelligence and security agencies, they hire people whose comp whole competitive advantage is that they read quickly. Um, and these analysts spend all day, every day in rooms reading through briefings and other documents, so a couple of pages. How many documents do you think these best of the best readers can get through in one day. Any, any guesses? Thousand. A thousand, five. OK, a little <laughs> wildly different. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> OK, so good range. Um, it's 150, right? Which, you know, for world class, does it sound that impressive? Uh, and it's because it isn't. It's just a really, it's a hard thing to do to read that, that many articles. And so, if you wanted to, say, read 10,000 intelligence briefings on what was happening in Syria or Iraq, you would need 66, give or take, of these analysts in order to get through those 10,000 briefings. And that's just one day, right? 10,000 is such a tiny drop in the bucket of what happens in a day. Um, Two million news articles get posted every day. And news is slow, right? Like, Donald Trump tweets every, like, five minutes, so, you know, it's relatively so. So this is, this is the issue that we're trying to address. Um, and the reason that this issue is important isn't, doesn't just relate to intelligence agencies or um, you know, defense. It relates to individuals such as yourself. Um, I don't know about you in college, but I read way too many articles. Uh, and you, know, you spend hours reading 100 pages, but you've only read a tiny little snippet of what's out there about a topic all the way up to huge companies like Intel and NASA who are trying to understand what are my competitors doing? You know, like what is Google patenting in the last five years? Or how does the public feel about Bitcoin? Um, or even how do customers feel about my products? You know, a product can have several thousand Amazon reviews and you just have to pay people to sit there and sift through them. Uh, Quid could read those same 10,000 or so articles in less than a couple of minutes. Um, so I don't want to sit here and talk to you about the technology. I'd rather have this be a little bit more interactive. And I'll, I'll show you what this looks like through wine, given that it's like happy hour time. And I'm sure everyone wished that they had a glass of wine in their hand. Um, so this is kind of the basis of Quid, which is a network. Um, it's really, really hard to see. So I'm sorry about that, guys. But uh, the network has a couple of really key components that helps you understand what's going on in a topic. Uh, so this topic specifically is Bordeaux style blends. Um, so red blends. And each different dot or node here represents a different wine. Um, so you have the wine name here and a quick description of what it is. Um, and then you have a whole bunch of other data about it, where it's from. This one's from California. When it, you know, it's vintage, it's price, et cetera. Uh, on top of that, you have the connections between these nodes. So you'll see that there's these links that connect two wines together. Uh, and all that link means is that these wines were being described in a very similar way. Um, so these wines are conceptually grouped. Uh, and then on top of that, you have all these different colors. And these different colors have these different titles that sound really beautiful, like minerality, subtlety, and crisp, uh, pencil lead. Not as appealing, but you know, fresh and young, also really lovely. Uh, and so these are different topics that Quid pulls out using the language that's presented in the data set as a whole. So you don't ever go in and force an ontology on it. So that's another issue. You know, if you're reading a thousand articles and your friend's reading a thousand articles, you can come to two very different conclusions about what those articles are about. 
Um, here you're using a much more mathematical model to try to understand what are the actual topics contained within this set of text. Uh, the last thing you'll notice is that there's a weird kind of Jackson Pollock-esque structure to this uh, where you have this really lumpy center with a couple of things like bay leaf and tobacco and minerality and subtlety and crisp um, and pencil lead all creating this core of what a Bordeaux red blend generally is. Uh, but then you have these kind of weird ones out on the side. Um, and just because they're weird doesn't mean that they aren't big. So here you have a bunch of pairing wines where their description talks heavily about the foods that they should be eaten with. Um, or you could have one of my favorite fruit forward uh, out here as well. What this represents is you start to get a sense that there is a kind of core to what it means to be a Bordeaux red blend. But then you have these really weird ones that stick out. Um, and, you know, again, I'm sure that there are some Psalms somewhere that who could come up with this ontology themselves. This took us an hour to put together. And so it vastly increases how quickly you can interpret and come to decisions about a specific area. Uh, I also have whiskey up in case anyone you know, is a big whiskey fan, we can switch over. <laughs> All the alcohol data that you could ever want is, is here. <laughs> uh, so the network is, is interesting, right? It looks cool, you can kind of play around with it. Um, but I think it tends to lose kind of this impact uh, after that kind of first glance of that there is a center to what it means to be a Bordeaux style red and then there are some of these uh, ones that are on the, the outside. So we can also look at other types of data here, and you can start to break this down, much as you would say uh, quantified data in Excel. Um, you know, I want a bar chart to show what's, what's going on. So here, we're looking at the different regions that are found. Um, you can see that Bordeaux and California are the big producers of these types of wines, and that they actually follow a pretty similar uh, path in terms of the types of flavors and wines that they're putting out where you have, say, Italy, who's really much more focused on these food pairings. Um, and let's see, New Zealand, who's much more into this bay leaf and tobacco type of taste. Uh, so again, Quid just allows you to really quickly filter through this data and come to some sort of insights about it. Um, this is one really specific use case, right? We've actually worked with a bunch of wine producers on this to try and help them understand what kinds of interesting wines might be up and coming. How can they get ahead of those sorts of trends? Um, I tend to work much more on the technology side. So instead of you know wine descriptions, which are really nice, it's usually patents, which are not really nice in these networks. Uh, I think that that speaks to the breadth of questions that this type of technology can begin to address. 